सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू इन द थर्ड वीडियो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वैलेंसी नाउ यू कैन सी कैन यू रिकॉल कैंसिल दोज टू क्वेश्चन ओके नाउ लेट अस सी वॉट इज वैलेंसी द कपैसिटी ऑफ एन एलिमेंट टू कंबाइन इज कॉल्ड वैलेंसी द वैलेंसी ऑफ एन एलिमेंट इज इंडिकेटेड बाय अ स्पेसिफिक नंबर इट इज द नंबर ऑफ केमिकल बॉन्ड्स फॉर्म बाय वन एटम ऑफ दैट एलिमेंट विथ अदर एटम्स इन द एटीन एंड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द लॉज ऑफ केमिकल कॉम्बिनेशन वर यूज टू फाइंड आउट द वैलेंसीज ऑफ एलिमेंट्स in the 20th century the relationship of the valency of an element with its electronic configuration was recognized now in the blue box you can see the electronic configuration sodium atom na electron configuration is 2 81 it donates one electron that is minus 1 e dash so sodium ion is formed na plus and its configuration becomes 2 8 chlorine atom cl its electron configuration is 2 8 7 it accepts one electron and becomes chloride ion that is cl minus and its configuration becomes 2 8 8 so na plus plus cl minus gives na cl that is sodium chloride a sodium atom gives away one electron and a cation of sodium is formed hence the valency of sodium is 1 a chlorine atom takes up one electron and forms and an ion of chlorine that is chloride and thus the valency of chlorine is 1 after the give and take of electrons is over the electronic configuration of both the resulting ions has a complete octet octet means 8 due to the attraction between the unit but opposite charges on the two ions one chemical bond is formed between na plus and cl minus and thus the compound nacl is formed now you can see here the science capsule which is deleted okay so just cross it now let's go to the paragraph there thus a sodium atom is has the capacity to give away one electron while a chlorine atom has the capacity to take up one electron this means that the valency of both the elements sodium and chlorine is 1 from this the electronic definition of valency is as follows you can mark it the number of electrons that an atom of an element gives or takes up while forming an ionic bond is called as a valency of that element now here use your brain power how will the compounds mgcl2 and cao be formed in the from the uh, elements we'll see that later now here in the purple box you can see the number of the electrons that are given away or taken up is always a whole number therefore valency is always a whole number now the yellow box you can see over there that is cancelled okay now let us see what is given more in the slide here again let me define valency valency is the combining capacity of an element or radical for example the valency of carbon is 4 because it combines with four atoms of hydrogen to yield methane that is ch4 the number of electrons given away or taken up is always a whole number therefore valency is always a whole number now let us go to the next slide where we will see how the compounds mgcl2 and cao be formed from their elements now here magnesium uh, chloride MgCl2 magnesium atom electronic configuration is 282 it donates two electrons and forms magnesium ion Mg2+ and its configuration becomes 28 chlorine atom its electron configuration is 287 it accepts one electron forms chloride ion Cl- and the configuration becomes 288 therefore Mg2+ 2 Cl- gives MgCl2 magnesium chloride so again a magnesium atom gives away two electrons and a cation of magnesium is formed therefore its valency is 2 two. two chlorine atoms take one electron each and forms two anions of chlorine 2 cl minus and thus valency of each chlorine is 1 after give and take of electrons is over the electronic configuration of all the resulting ions has a complete octet 
due to attraction between the unit but opposite uh, charges all the ions on all the ions one chemical bond is formed between mg2 plus and 2cl minus each and a compound mgcl2 is formed now let us see about cao that is calcium oxide now in calcium oxide here we can see the electronic configuration of calcium atom is 2882 so it donates two electrons uh, calcium ion is formed ca2 plus so configuration becomes 288 oxygen atom electron configuration is 216 it accepts two electron that is plus 2e minus oxygen ion is formed 2o2 minus and 28 is a configuration so ca2 plus plus o2 minus gives cao a calcium atom gives away two electrons and a certain uh, and a cation of calcium is formed that is ca2 plus is formed hence the valency of calcium is 2 and oxygen atom takes up two electrons and forms anions of oxygen that is uh, two, uh, o2 minus that is oxide and thus valency of oxygen is 2 after give and take of electrons is over the electronic configuration of both the resulting ions have a complete octate. So due to attraction between the unit but opposite charges between the two ions, a chemical bond is formed between Ca2 plus and O2 minus and thus a compound CaO is formed. Now let us see a video on valency. Can you give me the answer? Yes, it takes place because atoms are always in a constant struggle to reach the stable state. And what is this stable state? Well, if the atoms have only one shell, then the stable state is achieved when two electrons are present in it. And if the atom has two or more than two shells, then the stable state is achieved when the outermost shell contains eight electrons. It's called an octet. But the stable state is seen only in case of a few elements. We know that elements like helium, neon, argon, etc. have atoms with such desired electronic configuration. But what about the case of atoms which do not have this octet? Yes, they will participate in bond formation. That means they will either give or take or share electrons. But wait! Who decides how many electrons will participate in the bond formation? Or who tells the atoms if they have to give or take electrons? Well, the answer to these questions is valency. Let's understand this concept in detail. In simple words, valency is defined as the combining capacity of an element. Now, what exactly do we mean by this? When we say combining capacity, that means how much can an atom bond with another atom? Does that mean how many electrons can be given or taken or even shared? Yes. Does the capacity of an atom to give electrons, accept electrons or even share them in order to achieve the octet state can be termed as its valency? And what about the case of elements with just one shell? That's correct. Trading of electrons is carried out for attaining two electrons in the outermost and only orbital in such atoms. Let us take simple examples to understand this. In case of hydrogen, we have just one electron in the outermost shell. That means it has to somehow add one more electron to the outermost shell. Thus, we find that the valency of hydrogen is 1 as it accepts or sometimes even shares electrons with atoms of other elements. So, can you tell me the valency of oxygen now? The electronic configuration of oxygen is 2, 6. That means it has 6 electrons in the outermost shell. So, how many electrons are needed to complete the octet? Yes, 2 electrons. Thus, the valency of oxygen is 2. It accepts or takes two electrons from other atoms for completing the octet. Now tell me what will be the valency of magnesium? We know that magnesium has 12 electrons. That means the electronic configuration of magnesium is 282. So how many electrons will be needed now? Six? That's correct. And that's what we're able to see. 
six electrons are needed to complete the octet. But which atom will give away six electrons so easily? Is it even possible? Not really. Then how will magnesium complete its octet? This is where the concept of donating electrons comes into the picture. If managing the gain of six electrons is difficult, then can it think of giving or donating the two electrons? Yes, absolutely. So if magnesium gives away two electrons from its outermost shell, then we say that the valency of magnesium is two. That means it's not only about how many electrons can be taken, but also about how many electrons can be given by the atom. That is how we calculate the valencies of various elements. Now to understand the concept better, let's take an example of elements forming one compound. Maybe we can think of sodium chloride. For the formation of one molecule, we need one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. What are the valencies of each by the way? Sodium has the electronic configuration 281, while chlorine has an electronic configuration 287. Before I tell you what happens, I want you to give it a shot. What do you think will happen? Doesn't this indicate that sodium will donate one and chlorine will accept one electron to complete their respective octet state? Yes, that's absolutely correct. And that is what helps in the formation of sodium chloride molecule. Chlorine needed one electron which it got from sodium and sodium gave one electron as it was the easiest way to achieve stability. So the valency of both sodium and chlorine is one. Does this mean that only elements having the same valency always combine together to form a bond? Not really. Just take the simple example of a water molecule. We have seen that the valency of hydrogen is 1 while that of oxygen is 2. Here, hydrogen needs 1 electron while oxygen needs 2 electrons. Both need electrons. So how do the atoms combine in this case? How will the bond formation take place then? Well, they will both share electrons with each other. But how? It's not that straightforward. We will understand it in one of our future videos. Okay, students. So I hope you have understood the concept of valency there. Now here, on this page, you can see, you can take your pencil in your hand and you can write it in your textbook, certain numbers. Now first, let me tell you about variable valency. Under different conditions, the atoms of some elements give away or take up different number of electrons. In such cases, those elements exhibit more than one valency. This property of elements is called as variable valency. Now, let us go to the table and in the table, the first big table, you can see there, element, the name is given, atomic number is given, electron configuration, valence electrons and valency. So in between blanks are there, you can just note down the blanks. Hydrogen 1, atomic number, electron configuration 1, valence electrons 1 and valency is 1. Helium 2, 2, 2, 0. Lithium, atomic number is 3, note down. Configuration 2, 1. Valence electrons 1, note down. Valency 1. So note down. Then beryllium 4. Configuration 2, comma 2. Valence electrons 2. And valency is 2. Boron 5, 2, 3. Valence electrons is 3. And valency is 3. Carbon atomic number 6. You can write it. Electron configuration 2, 4. Valence electrons 4, valency 4. Nitrogen 7, electron configuration 2, comma 5, note down. Valence electrons 5, note down. And valency is 3. Oxygen, atomic number 8, write it. Configuration 2, comma 6, valence electrons 6 and valency is 2, write it down. Fluorine 9, configuration 2, comma 7, valence electron 7 and valency is 1, write 1 there. Neon, it is 10, not 0, just see if it is printed in your book as 10, not 0. 
then electron configuration 2 comma 8 note down valence electrons 8 write it its valency is 0 noted down sodium 11 write there configuration 2 comma 8 comma 1 valence electrons 1 and valency is 1 magnesium 12 electron configuration 2 8 2 noted down valency valence electrons is 2 and valency is 2 aluminium 13 configuration 2 8 3 valence electrons 3 note down and valency is 3 note down silicon 14 electron form configuration is 2 8 4 write it 2 8 4 then valence electrons are 4 and valency is 4 write down this now here you can see always remember and research both these yellow boxes are deleted okay now let us see the next table some elements that exhibit variable valency now element copper symbol cu valency 1 and 2 so cu plus is cuprous nomenclature and cu2 plus is cupric mercury hg symbol Valency 1 and 2, Hg plus is mercurous and Hg2 plus is mercuric. Element iron, Fe 2 and 3, valency iron, Fe 2 plus is ferrous and Fe 3 plus is ferric. So I hope you have followed this. Now let us go to radicals. What do you mean by radicals? Now again you can take your pencil. We will be completing that table. So complete the table. Write down the cations and the anions obtained from the compounds in the following chart. So base and cation. Base NaOH. So cation is Na plus. Anion is OH minus. Noted down. KOH. K plus. Cation. Anion. OH minus. CaOH twice base, Ca2 plus is the cation and anion is OH minus. Next, acid, HCl, cation H plus, anion Cl minus, HBr, H plus and Br minus, HBr is hydrogen bromide. HNO3 is nitric acid, cation H plus and Anion is NO3 minus. So I hope you have noted down this cation and anion. Now, here what do you mean by radicals? Let me tell you about the radicals. So an ion or radical is an atom or a group of atoms of which the same or different elements which behave as a single unit with a positive or negative charge on it. Radicals have their own combining power based on which we write the chemical formulae. So now let us go to the next page. Now here, let us see here, the first paragraph here. Now let us, compounds with ionic bonds have two constituents. They are cation, positively charged ion and anion, negatively charged ion. They take part independently in chemical reactions and are therefore called radicals. So, this is the definition of radicals. You can mark it. It is seen from the above chart that different bases such as NaOH, KOH are formed when various cationic radicals are paired with an ionic radical. Hydroxide. Hence, the cationic radicals are also called as basic radicals. You can mark it. Cationic radicals are also called as basic radicals. Different bases are distinguished from each other by the basic radicals in them. On the other hand, different acids such as HCl, HBr are formed when various anionic radicals are paired with the cationic radical H+. Therefore, the anionic radicals are called as acidic radicals. You can underline it. The difference in the composition of various acids becomes clear by the acidic radicals in them. Now you can see, can you tell there? So cancel that can you tell. Okay. Only that can you tell. Now, generally, basic radicals are formed by removal of electrons from the atoms of metals such as Na plus, 
CU2 minus. But there are some exceptions such as NH4 plus, that is ammonium. Similarly, the acidic radicals are formed by adding electrons to the atoms of non-metals such as Cl minus, S2 minus. But there are some exceptions like MnO4 minus. Now use your brain power is cancel there. Okay, use your brain power. Please uh, do that change. Now, next paragraph there. Monoatomic radicals such as Na plus Cu minus, Cu, uh, Cl minus are called as simple radicals. When a radical is a group of atoms carrying charge such as SO4 2 minus, NH4 plus, it's called as a composite radical. The magnitude of charge on any radical is its valency. Now, let us see the concept of chemical formula of compounds recapitulation. The characteristics of a compound formed by ionic bonds is that its molecule has two parts. They are cation and an anion that is a basic radical and an acidic radical. So you can underline that statement cation and anion that is basic radical and an acidic radical. These two parts are oppositely charged. The force of attraction between them between the constitu them constitutes the ionic bond. The name of an ionic compound has two words. The first word is the name of the cation and the second is the name of the anion. For example, while writing the formula of a compound such as sodium chloride, the symbol of the cation is written on the left and the adjoining to it on the right hand side of the symbol or of the anion. The charges are not shown though the number of ions is written as subscript on the right side of the symbol of the ion. This number is usually obtained easily by the method of cross multiplication of the valencies. The steps for writing the chemical formulae are shown on the next page. Now this last box using ICT you have to cancel it. It's in the deleted portion. Now let's go to the next uh, page but here you can see still types of radicals such as acidic radicals, basic radicals, simple radicals and last one is composite radicals. Now let us go to the next page. Now here on the next page this box which you can see as step 1, step 2, step 3 and step 4 is cancelled. Okay, So change, make those changes. Now let us go to the pink box. Now here some basic radicals and acidic radicals are given. I will just read them. So ions or radicals. H plus hydrogen, Na plus sodium, K plus potassium, Ag plus silver, Cu plus cuprous, Hg plus mercurous, Cu2 plus cupric or copper, Mg2 plus magnesium, Ca2 plus calcium, Ni2 plus nickel, CO2 plus cobalt, Hg2 plus mercuric, Mn2 plus manganese, Fe2 plus ferrous, that is iron 2, Sn2 plus stainless, Pt2 plus is platinum. Al3 plus is aluminium. C Cr3 plus is chromium. Fe3 plus is ferric. Au3 plus is gold. Sn4 plus is tannic. NH4 plus is ammonium. Uh, ammonium. Now acidic radicals. H plus is, uh, sorry, H minus is hydride. F minus is fluoride. Cl minus is chloride. Br minus is bromide. I minus is iodide. O2 minus is oxide, S2 minus is sulfide, NH, uh, N3 minus is nitride, OH minus is hydroxide, NO3 minus is nitrate, Na2 minus is nitrite, HCO3 minus is bicarbonate, HSO4 minus is bisulfite, sulfate, HSO3 minus is bisulfite, MNO4 minus is permanganate. ClO3 minus is chlorate, BrO3 minus is bromate, IO3 minus is iodate, CO3 2 minus is carbonate, SO4 2 minus is sulfate, SO3 2 minus is sulfite, CrO4 2 minus is chromate, Cr2 O7 2 minus is dichromate, PO4 3 minus is phosphate. Now, let us go to the next page. Let us see. Here, use your brain power. Using the chart of ions, 
or radicals and the cross multiplication method write the chemical formula of the following compounds calcium carbonate sodium carbonate silver chloride calcium hydroxide magnesium oxide ammonium phosphate cuprous bromide copper sulfate potassium nitrate sodium dichromate now we will see here but before that students i would like to tell you that even if the government has or the board has deleted some portion you have to do self study because this will be useful for you in your next classes in the higher level studies so here we have to find out here the chemical formula of the compounds are given and you have to find out the uh, following compounds you have to find out their ions and radicals by using cross multiplication methods so here let us find out about calcium hydroxide the symbols and valencies of calcium and hydroxide symbol ca calcium oh hydroxide valency of calcium is 2 hydroxide is 1 so cross multiply you can see the arrows drawn there so therefore the chemical formula of calcium hydroxide is ca oh twice the two goes to oh and one goes to ca but we don't write one there so we write ca oh twice similarly sodium dichromate symbol na1 dichromate cr2o7 valency of sodium is 1 chromate is 2 so cross multiply so one valency goes to cr2o7 and uh, two goes to sodium so the chemical formula of sodium dichromate is na2 cr2o7 yeah and the third one i have solved ammonium phosphate the symbols of the valencies of ammonium and phosphate are nh4 and po4 so uh, ammonium is 1 and 3 is a valency cross multiply so you get nh4 thrice and po4 is a chemical formula of ammonium phosphate so you have to solve this based on the uh, steps given there on page 56 even though it is deleted you have to use it now let us see the concept map in the concept map we can see here atoms have size which is measured as atomic radius in nanometers now atoms have mass which determines atomic mass and molecular mass this mass is measured in daltons and also is expressed in grams is called as moles also determines the number of molecules using avogadro's number now atoms also have a combine atoms combine which are unstable so they combine so according to the laws of chemical combination they are related to mass or they are related to the proportion of atoms so we have related to mass as con laws of cons conservation of matter and here we have laws of constant proportion and both these laws together when where compounds are represented by chemical formulae and they are written using the valency of elements so atoms also have valency of uh, elements which are the electrons in the outermost orbit now let us see the exercise let us see the exercise now in this exercise the various uh, questions are given to you so you can solve them on your own and i hope you have understood the lesson so thank you very much